This is the Thank You Ocean Report. Over the last few years, scientists have been observing sea stars that have been dying in large numbers. In some cases, a sea star might lose an arm or multiple arms over a few weeks or in one day. Scientists refer to this as the sea star wasting syndrome. These types of symptoms can be found in animals that are just stressed for ordinary reasons. Before you can identify something as a wasting event, you need to make sure that you're not just documenting ordinary sick individuals, which occur all the time. Peter Ramondi is a professor in the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology at the University of California at Santa Cruz. How widespread geographically is the sea star wasting syndrome? We think it extends all the way from Alaska, southeast Alaska, maybe a bit north of there, all the way into Mexico. So pretty extensive. This is broader geographically than anything that we have seen. And regarding the syndrome, scientists have a significant amount of information about two distinct marine habitats tide pool areas and kelp beds, but almost no information about other types of habitats, and this is an important point. There are many species of sea stars, and to our knowledge, all, or almost all, within those two habitats have shown symptoms of the syndrome. And that's about 20 species, maybe a couple more, but we have so few observations about other marine habitats that we can't say anything about those, either in regard to what species are affected or how prevalent the disease is in those species. Biologists have recently noticed huge numbers of baby sea stars showing up at various beaches. As an example, there's a site right outside my window here at Long Marine Lab down at UC Santa Cruz. It's called Terrace Point, and over the past year, We've seen more recruitment, that is, more babies, than we have seen in the previous 15 years combined. But he says it's premature to suggest recovery is occurring because these baby sea stars need to become adults to see whether the syndrome is continuing. When we have done back-of-the-envelope calculations with respect to when these babies would have had to have been spawned as sperm and eggs, we come up with a time frame that is pretty generally consistent with when the disease was ripping through populations. And so it's possible that some of these babies, or maybe most of the babies, are the result of stress that was caused by the disease, causing there to be increased reproduction, thereby increased numbers of larvae, and now increased numbers of babies on the seashore. And to know whether the syndrome is still present in this new group of sea stars, scientists will measure what the survival rate of this group is and how it might compare with previous years. And I asked Peter Ramondi if scientists are any closer to actually determining the cause of the wasting syndrome. Well, there's a paper that was published a few months ago, and I was an author on it. And it was led by a guy named Ian Hewson, who's at Cornell. And we made the association between a denzovirus and the disease. This denzovirus has been around for a while, at least 70 years. And that's known because it's been found on museum specimens that were collected that long ago. And the real question is, well, why is it so virulent at this point when it's been around for a while? And one operating idea is that there's stress. What might be the cause of the stress? We don't know. This was a question that we posed early on. This might be an indication of something that is going to be more likely to occur in the future, or it might just be ordinary. In some places, it might be temperature. In other places, pollution. In other places, it might be ocean acidification, all interacting with this denzovirus, if it turned out to be ocean acidification. And I'm just using this as an example. That is something that is expected to increase with climate change. So that would be more of a portent than something that might be more a one-off temperature spike someplace because temperature spikes happen all the time. Are there other marine species which could also be affected by the syndrome? The next potential victim is going to be something that's related to it. And the things that are related to it are other echinoderms, things like sea urchins or sea cucumbers or brittle stars. And those are the ones we're looking most closely at. My thanks to Dr. Peter Ramondi. And here's your Thank You Ocean Everyday Action. Become involved in this issue by visiting seastarwasting.org. Your observations can help Dr. Ramondi and his colleagues better understand the sea star wasting syndrome. I'm Jerry Kay.